Let's, let's just start this off with the, the, the investment. Uh, why are you making this particular one at this uh, time per se? Are you looking at uh, uh, going broader, maybe into more, uh, maybe Central Africa, Southern Africa? What has actually pushed this particular decision? I'll get to that part of the answer a bit later. Uh, important for us, um, having bought this business three years ago, um, formerly known as Nampak Tissue, mm -hmm. one of the key drivers for buying the business was manufacturing excellence. And manufacturing excellence is about driving efficiencies, it's about managing cost, it's about improving capabilities of people, but as important, it's about expanding where appropriate. And in order for us to sustain growth um, in a tissue market that's growing at 20% year on year, improving manufacturing capability and improving our ability to put out quality products and to do it in the most cost efficient way is important. Coming to your question about Sub-Saharan Africa, one of the first things we did some 18 months ago was a feasibility study across Sub-Saharan Africa to identify where opportunities might exist beyond South Africa. Two of those opportunities presented themselves, the Southern African Development Community and East Africa. And we were able to supply and currently do supply um, Southern African Development Community nations such as Namibia, Botswana, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Malawi, with product that we manufacture out of South Africa. However, as you might or might not know, tissue is a very expensive commodity to be transporting long distances. Mm. And it stops at around Malawi being cost effective. And therefore, you need to be moving manufacturing or converting facilities mm. closer to market. So East Africa is definitely on our radar because we want to be establishing not just a South African manufacturing footprint, but hopefully in time a sub-Saharan sub African footprint. Mm. I mean, this is a very significant investment. And I think one of the questions that are important to be asking in our current economic landscape is the skills development, employment opportunities that are created out of investments such as this. You're correct. And important from an investment perspective was our ability not just to sustain our own growth, but in terms of manufacturing being such an important part of South Africa's gross domestic product, I think it's around 14 or 15 percent. Manufacturing was identified as a multiplier in the national development plan. And being a multiplier, it's important for us to, to invest locally, to create those job opportunities. It's this type of investment climate that is deserving of investment from corporates like ourselves. Um, that in itself addresses the issues around unemployment and our ability to grow people's capabilities. This particular investment enabled us to bring 16 people into our organisation from various institutions, Durban University of Technology, the various uh, universities around the country, with BTEC and uh, chemical engineering degrees. So we've created those opportunities for young graduates to come in, learn about the tissue industry, but also to acquire knowledge and experience in a facility like ours. Goth, um, it's arguably my, my, the, the biggest uh, issue with tissue is how it's made. And uh, this, of course, goes back to the pulp, which, of course, dates back to the tree. And with uh, climate change and all this talk about uh, eco-friendliness and sustainability, how much pressure are you facing right now from regulators and, uh, well, governments when it comes to your supply end of things? Because, let's face it, you're cutting down some trees. It's very important to have environmental considerations at the forefront of any investment that we make. I do want to make the point, however, uh, that for every tree that's cut down, another five or ten are planted. And we source from Forestry Stewardship Council certified um, producers. And you follow up on this? You actually do follow absolutely, up on this? Absolutely. And so it's a fallacy when you see at the bottom of um, all our emails, don't bring paper because <laughs> you're going to cut trees. In fact, forests are probably one of the very biggest um, carbon, carbon dioxide and carbon management um, uh, advantages that we do have and so it's important for us not just to harvest but to also grow back. Um, I think it's important too to highlight in particular this investment the energy efficiencies that we bring into market particularly in a country of ours where where utility struggles are, are known to all and and this particular investment 
uh, reduces our carbon footprint by around 12 to 15 percent, just given the amount of energy improvements that are brought to bear with technologies such as this.